is Lisa from Mobile Tech Review, and here we have yet another Chinese import tablet or export tablet. If you're in China, you would say that. Anyway, this is available for import from imp Chinese exporters like GearBest, who provided our unit, and it's been compared a lot to Surface Book, even though it has more like the ASUS Transformer. Remember those, the Intra ASUS Transformer Book kind of uh, keyboard bases here? This is the Chewy Hi13, HI13. Who knows which way you're supposed to pronounce it? Big H, little I13, probably Hi13. Anyway, it's only $350 for the tablet part, $50 for the keyboard, and another $25 or so for the pen. So an order of magnitude less money than Surface Book. Something has to give, right? We're going to find out what it gives now. Okay, so first things first, the tablet, the keyboard, and the pen are all sold separately. Again, ours came from GearBest, the Chinese exporters typically offer this, and it's a magnetic dock, the dock's about 50 bucks, again, the pen's about 25. This, uh, the price varies from day to day, there's specials and all that kind of thing, but it average is about $350 for the tablet. It connects magnetically to this, I mean, you just put anywhere near there, and it's like grabbing on there, those are some strong magnets. and. This is how the connector looks right here, so you get the idea. Again, like the ASUS Transformer book, boy, this is very stiff. It's really hard to move this just by your hand. So the good news is, is it's fairly firm. You can still have some display wobble, but you know, it works out. And it's metal, you know, for, for 350 bucks, 420 for the whole package, that's pretty impressive too. This keyboard is not backlit for the price, let's be real, you're not gonna get that. It's pretty decent, it's a little on the noisy, clacky side, but it works, it does the job. The trackpad is so-so. Two-finger gestures, like for scrolling, actually work pretty well on this. The clicker is really stiff, and the tracking is okay. It's not terrible, but it's not great. There's no battery or anything like that inside this, like there would be with Surface Book or with the old Asus Transformers, but there are two USB ports, Type A ports. So that's a bit handy, because if we take a look at the tablet itself, pretty minimal on ports here, although, you know, tablets don't tend to have a lot, even a Windows 10 tablet. We have, the most exciting one here is the USB-C port, and this would be th Gen 1, 3.1. I actually connected this to a 4K display, the poor thing. It was having some problems with that because it's already driving this big resolution display at 3000 by 2000 pixels, and then you throw in 4K, and this is an Intel Celeron in here. Not the sharpest knife in the drawer, a little bit better than an Atom with Intel HD graphics, so pretty low end stuff, and that's the Intel Celeron N3450, 1.1 gigahertz boost to 2.2 gigahertz. So you can do it. I recommend a 1080p monitor if you're gonna do it out through this USB-C port. You're also gonna charge it through that port, and it comes with a charger, like so, with a USB-C connector here. We also have micro USB 2.0 on here. We have micro HDMI and we have a headphone jack. So that's about it for ports. And you see the little grate here, the little, little dots on the side. It's got four speakers total, which sounds pretty impressive, but it sounds pretty tinny and pretty anemic despite that. The back too is metal. It's pretty sturdy. It has a nice chamfer on the edge. There's no rough points. It, it's very rigid. It, that is very impressive about the tablet. So pretty well built. The specs on this, nothing like Surface Book. Again, if you stop thinking about Surface Book other than you'd like a 13.5 inch high resolution display and you don't want to spend much money at all, then it's not bad. Again, you got that Celeron CPU. You have four gigs of RAM and 64 gigs of eMMC storage. That's the slow kind of storage. It's sort of like an embedded micro or SD card. So it doesn't do well on benchmarks for SSD speeds. Software installations are not super duper quick. And it's pretty limited too, given that Windows takes up a good deal of space. We had about 37 gigs free out of the box. But then again, you're not going to be installing Battlefield 1 on this, are you? Let's talk about the display, which would in theory be the selling point of this tablet. Now, before you shriek and scream and say you're going to have a seizure, and, and indeed, if you do have epilepsy, you might not want to watch this part of it. Uh, this is a, the worst case of PWM refresh I've ever seen on the display. It's pretty rolling flickery. The naked eye, you can't see this. Now, maybe we have, uh, you know, Manufacturers often use more than one LCD supplier. There have been some folks who've gotten this and have said that they got a brighter display and this didn't happen. You know, we've set our camera to make sure that the shutter speed is significantly higher than the refresh rate of the display. We've tried drivers. I've disabled all Intel display power management. It's still doing this. So 
Sorry about that, folks, as you're watching this. But other than that, again, if you're looking at this in person, it, you, you can't see that. And I haven't felt like there was any eye strain. And it is a high resolution IPS display with good viewing angles. It's glossy. It comes with a factory screen protector that we removed, but it really, it was hardly noticeable at all. It's not a bad display and it covers almost the full sRGB spectrum, which is pretty impressive for something this price. You usually you have to look around thousand dollars or so at an Ultrabook or a tablet to get that kind of color gamut. The gamma is way off. Uh, color temperature is fine on this. It calibrates pretty well. You can see the metrics on screen. So in terms of those specs, it's a pretty good display. There's just, again, the camera sees as much more than a naked eye does, that, that rolling screen refresh. Unlike Surface Pro 4 or Surface Book, this is not bonded glass. The glass is not laminated onto the display. So there's an air gap. You can see, you know, a little bit of a glass overlay on top of the display. At this price point, that's really totally fair. Unlike most name brand tablets that cost considerably more, this one is on the heavy side. We noticed the same thing with the Techlast X5 Pro that we also reviewed that was surprisingly heavy given its size. This weighs 2.4 pounds or 1.1 kilograms, just the tablet section alone. So a uh, Surface Book is about 1.6 pounds in comparison. And the base is another two pounds or 0.9 kilograms. So you're talking 4.4 pounds or two kilograms total weight. It's on the hefty side. So if you're looking for something that's real light in your backpack, this wouldn't be it. Uh, but again, for the price, it's hard to find them super light. In terms of performance, the Celeron is just barely better than the Intel Atom. And the Intel Atom is at the bottom of the bottom of what Intel makes in the way of CPUs. Uh, you do have four cores here and it does have boost. So you can go up to 2.2 gigahertz from the base 1.1 gigahertz, but it's not so aggressive like the Core M and boosting a whole lot, unfortunately. I noticed it lagging just yeah, doing a file copy from a flash drive while also launching the web browser and switching between some tabs. So this is for light duty work only. This is fine for something like typing in MS Word. For our programs, we'll do a little bit of the pen testing in a minute, the lighter weight ones like Mischief. Even Clip Studio Paint is fine. Photoshop has way too much lag. You're not going to enjoy it. But it works okay in OneNote, honestly. So for those of you who want note taking and for PDF annotation, it's adequate for that sort of thing. You would not really want to be editing DSLR photos on this video. Forget about it. It is just not fast enough for that sort of thing. Again, there's a battery in the tablet section. There's no supplementary battery in the keyboard base. It has a 37 watt hour battery. That's not too bad. It's a little bit less than we would see on an Ultrabook, but given the fact this is a 13.5 inch tablet, hey, that's fair. And the Celeron is a pretty low power consumer, running anywhere from four to six watts in power consumption. So uh, overall, I've seen battery life that has run about six hours. All right, let's talk pen. This is the Chewy 3 pen. So they went through a couple of generations. People had the first generation tablets and pens said, eh, it didn't work so well. This one is actually one of the better for the uh, no-name brand pens. This is not Intrig. This is not Wacom AES or Wacom EMR. Tried all those. This is their own pen technology, much as it might look like a Surface Pro 4 pen or a Surface Book pen with this kind of clip on it. Obviously, you got two buttons on the side here. It takes a quadruple A battery, like many pen technologies today, like Wacom AES and Entrick. And it has a tip that's reasonably fine, but not too super skinny either. And it's pretty hard and pretty plasticky. Um, but you know what? It works really well and it has pressure sensitivity out of the box. There's no special drivers pre installed for this, there's nothing you can tweak. But unlike the Tech Glass, it didn't have pressure sensitivity. This one does. Palm rejection on this, yes it has it, no it's not so great, but then a lot of these don't. Oh, let me switch to a better pen so you can see. See the pressure going up here as a light line, really heavy line. Now because of the screen flicker, I'm not going to spend a lot of time drawing pretty pictures for you folks. You know, some of you know that I like to do digital art. So let's see how it's keeping up here. That is not bad lag at all. Now in Photoshop, it's just like not even worth showing because it was so far behind what I was doing. Say I was drawing a cylinder and I wanted to do some shading here. Quick lines like that. It's keeping up absolutely no problem. It's not bad at all. I mean, I, I can't say I would replace a Wacom Mobile Studio Pro with this in terms of pen responsiveness and all that sort of thing. Obviously, there's not going to be any tilt or some, anything like that, but it works fine. So that's Autodesk Sketchbook. 
a lightweight program, so that one's going to work fine. Mischief, likewise, works pretty well. Try that. Now, Clip Studio Paint, we're going to give it a try. Now we're in Clip Studio Paint, and I have a 3000 by 2000 canvas at 300 dpi. So we're not talking a small canvas at low resolution. You saw the, it jumped a little bit when I was moving, when I put my hand on the glass, and then the palm rejection kicked in. And I'll do some manga style hair here. I'll give him a little nose, give him a little eyes, that sort of thing. So it, it, it's keeping up, it's not missing my strokes. Once in a while I see a stroke jump out, drop out on this. And for the diagonal line test, it's got some jitter, but I'm seeing worse. Let me go try to go slower. There's some jitter there, certainly is, just like on Entrig. If you go quicker, it's fine. And you can see the pressure sensitivity between a light and a heavy line. And let's do this to see if we can make it lag. And it's keeping up just fine. So with lightweight programs, art programs, this can work. Now, believe it or not, Art Rage 4 is just too heavy for it. And I saw some lag there, so enough that I wouldn't want to draw with it particularly. Now we're in Adobe Acrobat Reader, and we have a 134-page manual here. I know a lot of you, I have the ink annotations turned on. I know a lot of you just want to annotate PDFs, and that actually works just fine here. Now, if this is a big document, and scrolling through the pages can be a little bit laggy, a little bit slow, but I can do annotations. I can say... So now we're in OneNote, the Metro version. Oh, see, I missed one stroke there. But, you know, overall, it, it's not doing too bad, so it's usable for that. So that's the Chewy Hi13 or HI13, however you want to say it. Again, for the money, it's actually a fantastic value. As a service book competitor, it falls totally flat in its face. It's just not in the same league in any way, shape, or form. But honestly, for 420 bucks, including the pen, if you want it, you've got something with a high resolution display, a pen that actually works pretty well with pressure sensitivity, a decent keyboard back, and passable battery life. Obviously, not very good at processing power. This is not something you buy and you want to use Photoshop, especially Photoshop and then a 20 layer image or something like that. But for note taking, reading comics, and all that sort of thing, it does the job. And like I said, much as the camera is picking up the PWM refresh, uh, we can't see it with our naked eyes, so it's not as bad as it might seem. I'm Lisa from Mobile Tech Review. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more cool tech videos and thumbs up if you like this vid.